Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's Fast Chat as we discuss unpacking the carbon benefits of timber construction. I'm David Bodemer. I'm the uh, editorial director for Wealth Management Real Estate, and joining me today for this uh, for this discussion is Alan Organski, who is a principal at Gray Organski Architecture and director of the Building Lab at the Yale University School of Architecture. So, welcome, Alan. Thank you so much for for taking some time. Thanks, David. So, um, you know, looking at this this question of you know, we're here to, we're going to talk about, about timber construction, which is, you know, from a commercial real estate background, this is kind of an interesting thing to see now, like the more talk of using this, you know, versus the materials that we're used to. So I'm curious, and I know that it's something that's also obviously in the residential space as well, you know, even more. So the first question I have is what are some of the top factors that drive your firm's decision to build uh, with mass timber? And what and what are some of the factors that drive the demand from the user side, the occupier side? Yeah, I would say one of the catalysts for us was that we were um, really essentially cabinet makers and furniture makers when we first started. And I ended up going to architecture school and meeting my partner there um, and had a shop for years building furniture and components of buildings ourselves. And, uh, you know, so that that was a sort of internal genesis, I think, that we always had a familiarity with wood and its its function and its properties and the different characteristics of species. Um, and then we uh, essentially started to use less artisanal approaches to building with wood and started really looking at more industrialized methods. And and we really came upon these large glue laminated st structural members that we use for bridges and, and building frames. And then along came uh, a sort of budding revolution, especially in Europe, uh, in mass timber uh, and mm -hmm. the development of different products like cross laminated timber, which is kind of a material du jour right now. So I think it's a really exciting thing. Um, and then finally, I think we started through an expansion of a set of interests that were environmentally driven uh, questions about climate change and mm -hmm. carbon, carbon mitigation. But we started looking at the properties of wood and particularly with the growth of the mass timber industry, its capacity to be applied to really dense, large buildings in cities, and therefore creating a more, much more uh, potentially greater benefit um, if wood could be utilized to um, uh, improve forest health, um, mm -hmm. while also meeting demands of urbanization and population growth. We felt like there might be a really interesting equation in their formula for climate change mitigation. So can you unpack that a little more like, you know, just what what are the carbon benefits that timber construction provides and um, and, and in what would the what would be the impacts if we saw greater adoption of it like you're talking about in these urban settings? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. So uh, if you remember from high school biology class, uh, the carbon cycle and that uh, atmospheric carbon in the form of carbon dioxide is absorbed by plants, plant biomass, trees. Uh, and in doing so, with in the presence of water and, and solar energy, um, essentially it creates a carbohydrate, uh, which is like a, a sugar, a complex carbohydrate, which is wood, cellulose. Um, and so what's happening essentially is uh, forests and other plant biomass uh, on the surface of the earth are drawing carbon out of the atmosphere and storing it in the fiber of the plants. And until those plants are either consumed by aerobic bacteria when they die and fall on the floor of the forest, or uh, or if they're, they burn and they re-emit their carbon dioxide, that carbon stays stored in that wood, in that cellulose. Um, the other side of the carbon cycle is that digesters and combustors uh, burn carbohydrates uh, or in some cases, complex hydrocarbons, fossil hydrocarbons that we draw out of the earth, um, and we emit carbon dioxide. Um, so so uh, we're emitters, man, mankind, humankind are, are emitters, and, and, and forests and other biosystems are, uh, plant biosystems are absorbers. So now imagine that instead of allowing uh, carbon to uh, be re-emitted in, in the normal cycle of a forest's growth and death. Um, you grab the wood out of the forest and you put it into buildings, which are the most durable consumer products we make. What you've done is essentially 
broken one of the cycles of the carbon cycle by mm -hmm. interrupting it and pulling this what's called fast domain carbon, the carbon that grows over the course of 10 to 150 years in forests and plants, and you're storing it in a kind of urban bank. Hmm. What that means is by doing that, we potentially offset all of the fossil hydrocarbon that we've burned since the Industrial Revolution for uh, industry and manufacturing and automobile transport and all these kinds of things, um, which we have essentially saturated the atmosphere with. Um, and so, so we saw this as a potential kind of pump that would help absorb carbon and store it while we tried to mitigate carbon emissions in other places. And mm -hmm. the importance about that is that carbon right now, um, while not the most toxic or, or hazardous greenhouse gas, is the most durable. And so essentially we pumped a lot of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and changed weather and climate patterns in, in really dramatic ways. And we thought that one of the largest land systems other than forests or oceans are cities and that we could take advantage of that huge area and massive material that we will inevitably meet, uh, need to, uh, to, to build 2.3 billion people's worth of, of city space and housing and infrastructure. Now that's, that's a kind of, uh, a bit of a pie in the sky projection, but mm -hmm. we've analyzed it and found that actually cities, global cities by 2050 could be significant carbon storage systems. Wow. That's, that's, that's pretty, yeah, that's, that would be something to see. And I, and, and it's pretty encouraging to hear about that kind of projection. Um, I think another factor that we do hear about right now is this question of, you know, on the investor side, on, um, you know, and, and certainly with some of the publicly traded companies, but I think also with private, this increasingly talk of ESG objectives being an important part of, um, you know, how how people are making decisions on what where to invest and what to build. So does do you also see some of the driver coming from that side in terms of, of, of some of like or I mean, not, you know, contributing to this to this demand for for mass timber? Yeah, I have kind of a, it's a great question. I have a kind of optimist uh, glass half full view and a, and a more pessimistic one. Um, the optimistic side is that I think I think uh, society and especially the generation that is going to be facing the most dire aspects of this environmental challenge or crisis are more and more interested generationally in changing their be consumer behavior. And I don't mean just consumer like what, you know, whether you use plastic or whatever, but also like what you build things with in in, in the case of buildings um, for a couple of reasons, health benefits, which are, are, are being increasingly shown to reside in wood, wood products, wood interiors, um, but but also the broader upstream environmental benefits of working with the wood. And so um, what we're seeing is a kind of greater social license in the use of wood and a more profound understanding of the cyclical and, and, and varied nature of forests and forest growth and dynamics. Um, and, and that, that wood utilization might benefit forests, which is an appealing story. Um, and, and that's being researched very heavily. And I think it's for us, it's quite conclusive that, that certain forests will benefit dramatically from being harvested carefully and sustainably. Um, the health benefits of living in a wood building um, and and the fact of the renewability and the carbon benefits, all of these things are kind of accruing as a value add for uh, builders, developers, uh, planners. That Yeah, I, I, um, that sounds good to me as well. I think we should do that. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, um, I want to thank you so much for, for walking us through all of this. And, uh, and uh, thanks for taking that time today. Yeah, Dave, it was really nice talking to you. I, Hope we keep this up.